to and to give all praise on our glory to Yahweh, Ba Shabi Awashai, Ba Shamarakakwadash. Double honors to the apostles and elders and teachers of Great Millstone who rule well and teach well. My name is Brother Hawashai Zion, and I'm doing this message real quick to highlight something. So this guy's lost in the sauce. Um, not this guy particular, but the other guy. Let me show you this other guy. All right, so this guy right here, his name is Officer Tatum. So he, I guess he's a police department, you know, he's a um, centurion, you know, for Esau, you know, so he works for Esau. So bear in mind, I mean, some of the little uh, privileges that he's getting to partake in leads him to believe that there is no uh, uh, difference and no privilege that the Edomites have been given here in America and that we're all the same. And that we all have the same exact opportunity. Uh, well, we know that's just not true. Okay, so let's, let's listen in. And let's get down. And I'm going to scripturally break down a couple things and apply it to this. Let's get it. It takes longer, some, it like take temper, longer in like, life to do that. Like and it's not a black thing. It's an everybody thing. There's poor white people in this country too. Do you not forget that? Most people on food stamps are white. Most people. You see how he goes immediately to white? Okay. Because the main characters are Esau, Edom, all right, the Edomites, which is the so-called white man. And then there's the main character as well, which is Jacob, which is the so-called black, Hispanic, Native American, and Latino. But ultimately, the head tribe of the nation of Israel is the tribe of Judah, the so-called black man, which gets a lot of attention. And for good reason, you know, they're the strongest of all the tribes. The lineage of kings runs through Judah. And uh, the scepter is not going to depart from Judah. So we're just going to go ahead and, and, and uh, listen in some more. At this brainwashed individual to the left. The cross rate are white. Most people in the country are white. Most people get killed by police are white. Most most everybody in this country is white. What, so is, wh what, what, I'm is saying, that what does what that I'm statistic is, have to do with anything? That's actually not true. Most, uh, I think the leading cause of death for so-called black men is officers. It's uh, officers killing them. So that, that's kind of crazy, man, when you think about it. And, uh, you know, like I said, th th these guys, this guy on the left is definitely gone. The guy on the right is gone as well. But he's a little bit less gone than this guy. That if poverty was just, was just relocated to black people, it would only be black you people. You're talking on the script. I can't listen. All right, come on. This is professional victim. I mean, he's right. He, he, he is talking on a script. He's talking on a certain rhetoric. He's got rhetorical points that he just keeps on saying and talks in circles and, um, you know, doesn't really know what's going on. Hood 101 right here, especially when they start talking about reparations. Like, seriously, who would do the accounting on this? The people who are trying to do the accounting are also the people who would always want to be the beneficiaries of something. Not entirely coincidental. You can't work history that way. You can't go through history and think... Oh, let's make a big list of all the people who had suffering in history and find a way to compensate them. That is ridiculous once you open. You see how this jackass, whoever it is, who's um, narrating this, the based conservative guy, I believe it's him. But you can see how he's basically going ahead and, uh, you know, equating everybody's suffering to the so-called black man, Hispanic, Native American, Latino. So listen up. OK, no other race were auctioned on auction blocks and had their babies cut from the stomachs of their wives right in front of them. And then, you know, the, the strongest of your tribe was buck broke. And you know what that means in front of everybody, in front of his children and his mother and his family and his, and his father. So, and then separated after that. So you mean to tell me that anything, any type of suffering would be equal? Now, we know that the scripture says in 2 Maccabees, um, and if you don't know, now you're going to know, 2 Maccabees 7 and 32 says we suffer because of our sins. So the reason why we suffer is because of our sins. Now listen in more. In that box for instance you might go through the list and i don't know you might find that uh, maybe the jews suffered a lot what are we doing here are we maybe the jews like he tries to equate you know the the balfour declaration in the 1948 and the lies that were told in that era 
to try to equate it to the suffering of 400 years of slavery and chattel slavery and destruction and discrimination and uh, total heritage uh, destruction, uh, according to Psalm 83, okay, and it tells you, you know, um, that they were con there were certain nations that were confederate against the Israelites, that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance, meaning their heritage and customs, they won't follow it no more. And that's the so-called black man, Hispanic, Native American, and Latino. They're not Latinos, okay? They were actually taken over at a certain point in time in history, and so were the so-called black man, okay? And they were taken, the so-called black man was taken over here on slave ships, and that's just a fact, okay? And sold to their oppressors. So let's just not start all that madness. Listen to this clown try to, you know, try to try to stir up controversy, man. Going to find a way to pay back the Jews for their suffering? What about? And bear in mind, the uh, the Jew, the so-called Jews that are in the state of Israel today are not the real Jews. And there's more than one tribe of the nation of Israel. There's twelve tribes of the nation of Israel. Where are the other tribes? You keep talking about the sufferings of the Jews. Well, there's really supposed to be the Israelites, according to the Holy Bible and the scriptures, all from Genesis all the way to Revelation. It's all about Israelites from the very beginning to the end. So I just don't understand why the, he only qualifies God's chosen people as being Jews and equates them to the so-called white man that was placed there in 1948. Madness. Even the population of so-called suffering parties in that time in the so-called Holocaust did not equate to the actual population. The death toll superseded the population there. So we know that they were lying. Sephardic Jews, that's all lies. This is literally documented lies that no one looks into. Freedoms that we have in America. What if somebody's forebears fought more for our freedoms than mine? Do they get more freedom? You would say that's ridiculous, but this is the same thing that we're talking about. And I'm not saying that there wasn't discrimination in the past on people's gender and sexual orientation. Race. You see how they, they take it to gender and sexual orientation rather than what it really is, okay? The so called black man, Hispanic, Native American, Latino, has been disenfranchised and put in chattel slavery for far too long, more than any other race of people on the planet Earth, and that's so-called Hispanic as well, and Latino, all right? So don't even try to play no kind of folly games with us, because we understand the scriptures and we know who's who. Not what I'm saying. But to say that you're suffering today in the wealthiest, freest nation in the world with the most opportunity because of something that happened to a forebearer, for instance, you're engaging in so many lies when... Bear in mind, he means forefather because this, this man's uneducated. You do that. To think that in some way white people of today should be compensating anyone else. When a lot of the people that are in America today had nothing to do with the slave trade, a lot of the minorities that are in America were... <laughs> what, a, what a clown. They are beneficiaries of the slave trade. Okay? Rothschild. All of these companies, the railroad stations, were instituted by people who basically were slave owners. And they made their wealth from all the slaves. And then they passed it on to their kids that they made off the slaves. And after all the beatdowns and the beatings and selling off the slaves and making the money from them unimaginably high, then they passed it on to their sons and their sons who are now in power today. But it doesn't have anything to do with them today. But the money does but nothing else. You see this madness, brothers? And I know you're getting angry because how could you not get angry at this trash? And I, remember, this guy is set up to the left to say these different things, to say these little uh, uh, talking points. He's set up to come and speak to the college to brainwash the youth in their filth and their pollution.
never victims of slave trade, but like they're acting as if the 15th, 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th century were just hunky dory across the world. For bad things happen to all of us. Not like white people throughout history were living in sunshine and rainbows. And you can't say that today. Oh, they definitely were sunshine and rainbows for sure, because they had slave labor. Okay, they had slave labor. This is not talking about bad things. See, that's easy to talk from the comfort of your home when you have nothing going on and you're just such a privileged so-called white man. You know, it doesn't matter. You know what I mean? And this guy is an Edomite, whoever's talking. I don't care if he looks like a so-called black man. If he is, he's an Edomite. I could tell. Well, listen in. The system is racist or systemically racist when we had a black president for eight years, the highest position in the country. Today, you would no longer be dealing with a transfer of wealth from one group of people who did something wrong to another group of people who were wrong. It would have been that 200 years ago. If you would have figured out a way to do it 200 years ago, sure, maybe. But today, it's not even the descendants of the people who did something wrong giving money to people whose descendants were wrong. It would be a wealth transfer from people who look like people who did a wrong thing in the past to give another group of people who resemble people that were wrong in the past you give people opportunity that's all we can do even this guy is wildin man now if you hear what he just said i'm gonna play it back man and pick it apart but this is unbelievable listen to this he just saw he completely minimizes 400 years of slavery a hardcore slavery with deaths and the death toll so high, no one even kept track. Or systemically racist when we had a black president for eight years, the highest position in the country. Today, you would no longer be dealing with a transfer of... And there was a reason why they made a black president so that they would cut all the noise down and anger about civil rights and things that they knew were violations, okay? There were several different things that were happening around that time in the country in regards to so-called black people being discriminated against, which again is a part of Psalm 83, okay? And goes back to the hatred between Esau and Jacob, Okay, but listen in again. Well, from one group of people who did something wrong to another group of people who were wrong, it would have been that 200 years ago. If you would have figured out a way to do it 200 years ago, sure, maybe. But today, it's not even the... Dis He's saying 200 years ago, like in 1776, so-called black men and women were not slaves, okay? And the Latino Hispanic as well. Because they came here in around 1492, whooping ass, killing and slaving people, all right? So I don't know what you're talking about. Really, it was back in 1492 when they came here and settled and started, you know, putting people in slavery. Christopher Columbus, you know, Cristobal Colon, that devil, had documented all the fact that they would be good slaves. All right? The slaves were in good shape. They were looking in good shape. They're going to make great servants because they're wicked. All right. So you cannot equate the two. All right. Now. Deuteronomy 32 talks about the fact that we would serve bondage on in slavery on slave ships, or ultimately be taken on slave ships as bond men and bond women and be sold, you know, and that's what it is. And that's what has happened. And that was due to the breaking of the laws, the statutes and commandments of the Most High. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father. And those laws that were given unto Moses to give unto the Israelites were disobeyed quite frequently, okay, into high levels. So the Lord said, you know what? I just took you out of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. And, um, you know, after Moses was given this law out, once Moses died, you know, everything just went pretty much haywire. But there was a lot of worshiping of idols and other nations and witchcraft and all types of madness that the Lord, Yahweh, had stated in the scriptures that he was going to set you, you know, basically, ultimately under the Edomites and have your oppressors rule over you. And no one's going to save you from it. And that's what happened. Descendants of the people who did something wrong giving money to people whose descendants were wrong. It would be a wealth transfer from people who look like people who did it. You see how we said a wealth transfer? Okay, a wealth transfer transfer listen the wealth was generated by so-called black hispanic and native americans okay it's not a transfer it's who it belongs to really this land is not your land you came here by force and established it on blood all right it is a fact of life 
that America was a nation founded on bloodshed. Okay? And in the book of Numbers 35, it tells you that any nation that's founded on bloodshed, it cannot be cleansed but by the blood of those that shed it. And who's that going to be exactly? All you Edomites, okay? The so-called white man, all right? The so-called white man. The wrong thing in the past to give another group of people who resemble people that were wronged in the past. You give people opportunity. That's all we can do. Even if you can make a case that for certain people in America, even if you could, and you can say the consequences of where they're at today have to do with slavery. It is. It would be such a small part of a multidimensional issue. Underachievement in the black community in America is not based on slavery. Because how else would you explain the Asians who arrived as the poorest class in the country were now the richest class in the Korean? No, oh, they were poor. Oh, no. As poor as people who had zero dollars with nothing and slavery getting beaten with whips. Listen, we've seen the pictures of the so-called black men and women that were beaten with whips and the fact that they can be executed in public without nobody doing nothing about it, not even any police force or anything. Um, no government agency or anybody would step in and say, hey, you can't kill those so-called black people now. Leave them alone. Nah, they wouldn't care. None of the laws applied. They were called three-fifths of a man. It was just absolutely atrocious, the disrespect. And for this guy to stand up for this system is wild. We're in the country. It is a Let, very... Let's move on. And I don't have money because... Well, in history, they were of generations... It's like how many... But it went before... Well, M -E -L, uh, you're Of generations... And that doesn't matter what your skin color, your gender, or your sexual orientation is. Let's get back to it. Okay, uh, Mel, M-E-L, uh, you're Brandon. I'm sorry. I've just did some research on you. Um... This guy's a homosexual and he's also an effeminate man, which in the scriptures, this man will be rounded up and just straight up put to death. But uh, let's just listen in anyway. So I want to go back to Marcel Williams, I believe. You yeah. said that uh, he was guilty and he should have been killed. Is that correct? Yes. Are According to the law. Yes, but are you aware about like how many stipulations there is against his case? Like how many... Like how the own prosecutor said that they mishandled evidence, they altered DNA evidence, and they did make a biased jury are you i don't that? think that that's verifiably true i think that's things that are rumored but it went before a court clemency was pre presented to the governor and it went to the supreme court of the united states of america and in every single court he lost his appeal so to me i'm more inclined to believe that the case against him was solid enough that he was ultimately executed there's many people that were not executed in this country because they've taken their case to higher courts and have been overturned. I don't think Marcellus Williams is any different. Than I gotta stop this real quick and read this comment. So it says here, if black people are being held down by the system, why are most of the NBA players black then? Every single one of those guys are millionaires. Now let me stop right there. It's because they're more talented. All right, you're paid according to your talent. And if you put, you know, you know what in seats, then you are worth that money. It has nothing to do with being black. It has the fact that, you know, the so-called uh, black man, which is the tribe of Judah, is one of the most strongest and fastest and most physically gifted people on the face of the planet. And that's why women love our men. You know what I'm saying? And that's, nothing, that's all across the board. You know what I mean? Even the so-called Latin tribes, you know, and whatnot, which is the, also the tribe of Ephraim. The, the women love them, some of them. You know what I'm saying? And in a... Uh, Tribe of Asher and whatnot, and also, you know, uh, the Brazilians and everything like that. You know, all, all of the tribes down there, they love them, man. You know, and, and we're physically talented, but of, of the most of them is the so-called black men. The most physically gifted. He said, why don't we see Filipino NBA players more? That's because they are not Israelites. All right, they are some of them in there, the tribe of Judah. But, um... You know, primarily not. And and that's the thing, you know. The Lord said he'd scatter us amongst the heathen and make us small in number amongst them. And that's why we don't see Filipino uh, stars in the NBA. They're not physically talented like that. There's nothing to do with the color and, you know, we're just going to hook them up, a couple of NBA guys, and we'll be good. Nah, man. Nice try, buddy.
Shalak Ryan on that jackass as well. Anybody else, you would have to show me unequivocal evidence as clear as the noonday sun for me to believe that they wrongfully executed this man. And it's and, and I want to argue this is not racist. It's not a racial thing. People want to make it a racist thing because the last person that was executed had the same argument that he had. And it was a white man that was that was convicted or, or accused of a double murder. He was executed in the same state. So I don't think it's a racial thing. And I think that he just simply lost. Was the prosecutor for the white man arguing for the white man to get off trial? Was the defense of the prosecution of the white man, just like Marcel Williams, trying to get him off? Yes. Not the prosecution, but the def his defense but argued that he was innocent and he still though, got executed. Thing is, though, in this case, the prosecution argued two other courts and the defense, both sides who were involved in that trial, argued that he was innocent. And they lost. The former uh, Missouri governor was actually in the process of getting him off. I'm really sorry. I forgot his name. It's It doesn't I matter his name, but he, they, were, they lost. But, they simply lost yes, the court of law. Yes, but the governor himself was convinced that he was innocent and was actually starting the, the process. The governor did not con me, was not me, convinced. The, the governor was not convinced he was innocent. He had a chance. No, I'm talking about not this one. I'm really sorry. I forgot okay. his last name, and I'm thought he was kind of embarrassing because I am on camera, and I forgot. But it's totally fine, dude. The former governor back in I think like 2018, 2019. I forgot when the scandal was, but he was basically trying to get this man off because he was also listening to the prosecution, listening to the defense, and knew that this man was innocent. Oh, sorry, I'm pressing in front of the mic, and. No, I can't listen to this guy no more, man. He's too effeminate, man. Let's go back to this part right here. I want y'all to listen to this. Let's start with this. I actually went and graduated from a university. So I'm not a guy that didn't go to college. I, I had a full scholarship, so I didn't pay for school in my undergrad. Graduate school, I paid for out of my pocket. I did not get a loan. I mean, I did not have to get loan forgiveness or nothing like that. I had $11,000 worth of debt, and I paid it. How is that different than anybody else out here? Because everybody doesn't have the same that, opportunity. I'm black though. Why did, how did I pay my loan off and you can't? Or Where are you from? Wait, I'm from Texas, Fort Worth, Texas, Dunbar High School. Fort Worth, right Texas. Right in the hood and stop six. It, right in the hood and stop six. How did I get to this point if America's against me? Did everybody in your neighborhood get to that point? Well, different choices. There's a lot of people in Where my neighborhood that made it out. At? Because they made better choices. I could have sold drugs. I didn't. Why? Because I wanted about? something better out of my life. What do you say about the disproportionate wealth? Is, is that, okay. does that not matter? It, it's about culture. How much money do you save? I don't know. I'm in debt, bro. You in debt. How much do you... Yeah, so he didn't He didn't answer the question. See, the, uh, the disproportion of wealth, what he's really getting at is the fact that, you know, the so-called white man had a 400-year head start on the so-called black man. So it's definitely absolutely not fair out here. Yeah, you could go from bottom of the barrel uh, with no money in your pocket and go and make some money. Uh, but it's just not going to be enough to beat the guy who's already got $100 million to invest and play with. The bankroll's just too big. For instance, if you give me um, $10,000 and say, here, man, go, uh, go play some blackjack with it, man. See what you make. You know what I mean? I'm going to have way more money than the blackjack player that starts off with 100 bucks or 150. He's not going to be able to get up to that level because you just don't have the leverage of the income. And the reason the income was taken was simple. Let's go to it. Now, I read this scripture earlier while well, I spoke about it, but now I'm just going to go ahead and get it. Psalm 83 and verse number... Two, it says, for lo, thine enemies make a tumult, which means an uproar, and they that hate thee have lifted up the head. They have taken crafty counsel against thy people and consulted against thy hidden ones. They have said, come, let us, and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be in no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The houses of Edom and of Ishmaelites, of Moabites, or Moab and the Hagarines, Gebal and Ammon, Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. I, sir, also is joined with them. They have hopen the children of Lot, Salah. Okay. And let's just quickly go into the word hoping.
Uh, whoops. It's locking my brothers. They changed this up a little bit. H2220. So it says here they have Holpin, the children of Lot. It says arm, forearm, shoulder, strength. Holpin, shoulder, so it says forces, political and military, figuratively force. Okay, so the foreleg, so figuratively force. They have forced the children of Lot. That's what that means. Okay, a sir also is joined with them. They have forced the children of Lot. So yeah, they 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 basically took them by force. And you know this is this is not to be taken light. All right, and back to Deuteronomy. When you go to Deuteronomy, you know again we suffer because of our sins, but this is part of the uh, curses in Deuteronomy. Why why this is happening? All right, Deuteronomy 28 and 64. And the Lord Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people from one end of the earth even unto the other. And there thou shalt serve other gods, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shalt thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest. But the Lord Yahweh shall give thee there a trembling heart and failing of eyes and sorrow of mind. So this is part of the curses. We're under these curses right now. Okay. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee. And thou shalt fear day and night. And thou shalt have no assurance of thy life. Does that sound familiar, my brothers? Okay. So that's what's going on. And again, this is a promise that the Lord was going to do this because if you broke the law, consequences of disobedience, Deuteronomy 28 and 15, but it shall come to pass if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord, Yahweh thy power to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day and all these curses shall come, excuse me, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. And it proceeds to speak on this. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Cursed shall be the basket, thy basket and thy store. Cursed shall be the fruit of thy body. And that's the, your kids. And fruit of thy land, uh, and the fruit of thy land, and the, and the increase of thy kind, and the flocks of thy sheep. And that's all your increase, everything. Cursed shalt thou be when thou comest in, and cursed shalt thou be when thou goest out. The Lord Yahweh shall send upon thee cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that thou settest thine hand unto for to do, until thou be destroyed, and until thou perish quickly, because of the wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. So you forsook the Lord, so he's going to forsake you too, man. That's why you're in this estate right now, with the look that this guy's got on the right side, on the right hand side right here. Now let's listen in. Keep all that in mind. Invest. I don't know. How did you get into debt? Who chose to come here? Me. Well, that's you, you you laid it out. Now, when you come here, for every college student here, this should be an investment into your future. All right. Anybody that know anything about making money knows that you have to invest to get to the next step. You may to listen, you may be in debt. Money. You may be in debt to make an investment to get to the next step. So if you do this properly, this is a debt investment to make more money in the future. If you come here and clown around and take a major that won't put you anywhere, then you just got in the debt for no doggone reason. It's a cultural thing. Black people in America don't have wealth like others because they choose not to to generate wealth through investments and passing their money that is not the goddamn reason why. It's because you were put in slavery for 400 years due to your disobedience to the Lord. Not because you're lazy and you're just a group of people that's just really lazy, that just doesn't make the right investments. That's bullshit attitude, man. This guy's got an entitled attitude because he just somehow got into the police department. You know what I mean? Because he had a degree, so they felt bad for this guy and then made him a big good, good old slave. Made him a, a roundup man of the slaves. It's ridiculous, man. Down. Who's teaching us to do this? We should teach each other to do it. Why does somebody got to teach? You want the white man to teach us? 
Is that what you're saying? I mean, hell, teach us something. Okay, no, you could teach. You could teach something. You got a college. You can get in a college education. When you have children, so, so, teach your so children. So basically, help yourselves. We know we we know you have this 200 year head start. That we know doesn't matter, bro. You don't you have nothing hey, to do hey, with. Hey, you don't hey. have nothing to do with that. Oh. You don't have nothing to do with that. I thought you said one at a time. You don't have nothing to do with that. I don't do have you? nothing to do with what? The 200 years that you're talking about. Yes, I do. Have you ever heard of generational trauma, generational wealth? You my have people don't own anything. Where my you come, where you come from? Where you come from? How can you build something when my people come from nothing? I come from South Memphis. And I come from Stop Sick. See, now this guy's going to try to deflect, but this guy's got a massive point on the right. And he shut him down. And that was it. Now, he's going to try to tap dance out of it, but you're not going to be able to dance away, you know, what he's saying, because he's tr he's right, man. Congratulations. Congratulations. I went to university. What does university. comparison mean? It what means does that comparison we, mean just when real the statistics quick. say that we are behind? We are not behind. Some people are behind. We're not behind. Why? Because we make positive decisions. No. It's because you too just found you know, some type of favor, slight favor, and you know, with the so-called white man or you're following his path through his universities, and that's the only thing. When you look at us as a people, this man is right on the right hand side. We are not, you know, look, a couple of us have, you know, a couple thousand dollars in the bank. Well, that's about it. And a bunch of debt. You know, we, we don't have nothing. And you look at the other uh, cultures, they have massive wealth. And I'm talking about power, all right, to make you disappear. We don't have that type of power. We don't have that type of power. Not yet. Not until Yahweh Shai returns. And when Yahweh Shai returns, oh, it's on. It's on big time. He not behind. He not behind. She not behind. Do I want to go point You're out on a college black campus. You're on a college it campus. It depends on what you do with, with what you have presented to you. Sorry to stop it here, guys. If you don't mind just smashing that thumb. Every single person has an opportunity to do something with what they have in their hand. And we have I'm, nothing in our look, hands. Look, look, let That's me the say point. This. Let me say this. Let me say this. I believe wholeheartedly that God gives you a hand of cards to play. <laughs> hear me out. God gives you Let, a hand. Hear me out. God gives you a hand of cards to play. Not everybody's hand is the same. What you can have a full deck of great cards and you play them poorly, you won't make it in life. You can have a bad hand, you play them strategically and you play them right, you'll do good in life. You had a not so good hand growing up where you grew up at. You made positive decisions that led you here. That's now he's right, but he's also deflecting, okay? He's also deflecting, and it is true. You know, you can squander what you have and not multiply your talents, or you can multiply your talents and get praised, you know, uh, praised for that. And uh, ultimately find favor with the Lord. However, you know, the guy's just not mentioning nothing that's in the scriptures because he's blind to the scriptures. The other guy's blind to the scriptures. And that's why we got to keep on teaching the scriptures. All right. That we're the real true Hebrew Israelites that the Bible speaks of. Now, this is just one tribe. All right. Of the nation of Israel. It's the, just, just the tribe of Judah right here talking together. But there's others. There's 12 tribes. The hand you get, you've been dealt. Everybody don't have a freaking silver spoon in their mouth. America is but the we, only place. They proportionately Who do. is they? Everybody else, man. Everybody else like who? <laughs> I just read it, man. I just read it in the scriptures, all right? Everybody else like who? I know who. I, I know who, all right? And we know who. It is the tap. This is Psalm 83 and 6. The tavern, excuse me. Let me go to um, verse number Four says they have come, said, come and let us cut them off from being a nation that the name of Israel may be no more in remembrance. For they have consulted together with one consent. They are confederate against thee. The tabernacles of Edom and the Ishmaelites of Moab and of the Hagarenes, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines with the inhabitants of Tyre. Assur also is joined with them. They have forced the children of Lot Salah. Think about it. Okay? Think it over. Are you saying white people? Brother, you yes. in you in the same situation as all these white people and you and Am you play the victim. Am I? How, you at the Am same I? university? Am I? What does the same university have to do with anything? You go to the same class. I had a 4.3 GPA in high school. I did what I was supposed what to you hit. Got now? This kid would get frisked immediately and possibly think that he had a weapon on him just for walking down the street looking like he looks, and then the kid behind him, the so-called white kid, 
he would not. So yeah, no, we're not the same. What I was supposed to do. What's your GPA now? 3.6. Brother, what's holding you back then? That's the point. Everybody doesn't have a 3.6. Everybody is Did you just get a 3.6 because you woke up one day? You studied, didn't you? Right, no, I what? actually didn't. You didn't study. No. So then you have a gift that you can go and make a three point something and don't even study. Right. Brother, I mean, I don't know. I think we're wasting our time talking to each other. You really are wasting your time talking to him because, you know, this guy's set up by the government. This guy to the left, uh, kid on the right, just is lost and um, never know. He could be one of the lost sheep of the House of Israel as far as uh, waking up is concerned, but he needs to find his way. He's got a decent attitude about everything, seems to uh, have an open mind. And uh, first and foremost, it kind of does. That's why we go to Deuteronomy, you know, so, so that we can understand and also Psalm 83 so that we can all understand first and foremost that there's a problem once there's a problem then we tell you you know what who's responsible uh for that problem and then also how to solve the problem